Good morning, family. Tuesday morning. And um, I want to go ahead and give you your, your thought and your challenge for today. Yesterday, we talked about the holiness of God with regard to his, um, his regard in your life. And in particular, when we pray, God ought to have a place that's, that's exclusive, that's unique for him. And we went over those, those four things that can help us to make sure that we don't, we don't allow anything to take that place. We don't allow anything to crowd that room or, or um, uh, to even contest the regard we have for God. And I challenge you to never allow it to become common. Never allow your thoughts about God to become common. Don't, don't become casual with them. Don't get comfortable by treating God regular. But to remember that God has an exclusive covenant right in your life, um, like, like a husband and wife situation, like a special uh, prized possession that you don't want to be compromised by anything around you. And when you go to that God, that holy God, you hold him in remarkable regard. Don't let anything taint how you think about um, your God. And today I want to challenge you a little bit more with regard to the holiness of God. Remember, Jesus says, when you pray, um, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we've looked at um, a couple of other translations that kind of carry that thought out, flesh it out a little bit more. May your name be kept holy. Um, may we always honor you. That was one translation. And then like, I like the message, reveal to us who you are. And that's kind of what I want to key in on today. Because number two, not only should you have the right regard for God in his holiness, but remember also that God is a God of extreme renown. And I like the word renown because it, it, um, it's kind of one of those ancient heroic kind of terms. And it speaks to the power and the the, uh, the awesomeness of God. And that's really what I want you to focus on. When you think about God being set apart, he's set apart not only because of how awesome he is as a, as a God and as a person, but he's set apart because of what he's done. Nobody has helped you like God has helped you. I know we've got friends, we've got parents, we've got people in our life that have been great helps to us. But quite frankly, their help does not match God's help. God, God helps to facilitate the entire reality that you are a part of. And you need to remember that. You need to remember that his help transcends uh, people. His help transcends the lifespan of individuals. In fact, he's been helping you to get to where you are long before you got to where you are. And he's helping you to maintain a sense of, of presence right now where you are. He's just, he's an awesome, awesome God. He helps in ways that nobody can help. And that's the reason why he has such renown. His, his name, his person uh, goes beyond anybody else. But not only is he a God that helps, he's a God that heals. He heals what man can heal. That's the reason why when you think about the life of Jesus, how his, how his, um, his influence began to grow through his teaching, through his power, through his miracles, through his healing and, and, and the things that he's done. Who can do what God has done. Who can do what God can do? Nobody. He heals the sick. He heals the lame. He heals the blind. He heals, he heals the, the leper. He heals so many. He even raises the dead. That's an awesome God, a God that you can go to, to be healed for whatever is bothering you. But not only is he a helping God and not only is he a healing God, but God is your hero. God is the God that went through the gates of hell, bust through the gates of hell, bust through the burning flames of your soul's despair to rescue you out of a state of lostness to bring you into a salvific relationship with him. Remember that it was God, God the Son, God the Father that planned it, God the Son that executed, God the Spirit that reminds you what he has done. And that's the reason why on whatever day it was, when you finally heard the good news that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, when you heard the good news 
that his death was and is enough. When you heard the good news that his blood cleanses from all sin, it doesn't matter how bad of a sinner you are. That's the beautiful part about it. It doesn't matter what you've done wrong. It doesn't matter how long your track record of wickedness is. The blood of Christ is enough to cleanse you from all wrongdoing. When that finally registered to you and you said, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. You begin to actualize, you begin to grab a hold of the power of that blood to redeem you. And that's the reason why you were willing to turn to him with all of your heart. That's the reason why you were willing to passively allow yourself to be immersed in water. And that's the reason why God said, I will wash your sins away, not by the water, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I will tabernacle you with you through the spirit of God. I will add you to the body of Christ. I will raise you to walk in newness of life. Why? Because I'm a God who's your hero. I will redeem you. I will rescue you. I will be the one to break through and get you from where nobody else could go. And that's your God. He's holy. He's a God of renown. And when I think about that God, when I think about the fact that he's done all of that for me, it does something unique when I talk to him. Because I know that not only did I mess up, but that God that got me when I messed up is the same God who's still willing to rescue me day by day. So he's my help. He's still my healer. And he's my hero. And when I pray to him, I pray believing that he is a holy God. Hallowed be thy name. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. You pray for me. And let's watch God change things. But don't forget your challenge. Today when you think of him, today when you pray, pray remembering. Pray with regard, but pray also with acknowledgement of his renown in your life. God bless you.